as MKBHD here, and this is the long talked about Samsung Galaxy S5. So after the presentation of all its new features, I got to spend about an hour of quality time with this new phone. So here are my honest first impressions of all this stuff. So first of all, the new specs, since you can't really avoid them, it has a 2.5 gigahertz quad core processor, two gigs of RAM, LTE and 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Nothing too insane under the hood here, but definitely in the top tier, this is a high-end flagship phone. So on the front, it's rocking a slightly larger 5.1 inch 1080p AMOLED display, just a bit bigger than the 5.0 inch Galaxy S4. And that right there is the symbol for pretty much everything else about this phone. It's just slightly bumped up from the Samsung Galaxy S4 in a lot of ways. But one way it definitely did surprise is the build material. So the back of this phone, as predicted, feels a lot like the soft touch on the back of the Note 3, but without the leather stitching on the edges. But then for some reason, they added this unsightly bumpiness to it, like the dimples on the back. And I'm not sure how I feel about this. I mean, it kind of reminds me of the original Nexus 7, plus some sort of golf ball hybrid going on. It's weird, I, I can't say I'm a fan of it right now. But anyway, there are four colors, the black with the black front, the white, which has white bezels, the blue, which I guess is uh, the least bad looking of the bunch, I guess, uh, and it has black bezels. And then there's also the gold, which I like to call the Band-Aid edition. Anyway, at least the build of this guy has a tiny bit of reasoning behind it. Despite its removable back and totally expandable storage and totally swappable 2800 milliamp hour battery, the Galaxy S4 is still IP67 certified now. Now I'll leave a link in the description to exactly what IP67 means, but basically the six means it's totally dust proof no matter how small the grain, and the seven means it's water resistant, but not waterproof. Definitely a difference there. But what's cool is this doesn't seem to have a huge effect on the build of the phone. Like I said, the back is still removable. It only leaves me worried about that speaker quality. So we'll see how that turns out. Anyway, I think I played with this phone for maybe 15 minutes before I actually noticed that the front buttons, the layout has changed. So now it's a back, home, and multitasking button. No more capacitive menu button. All the menu buttons will be in software now on the screen. And of course this carries over into Samsung's other tablets as well. So I guess it shouldn't really be much of a surprise. And speaking of buttons, in a very Apple-inspired move, Samsung went ahead and put a fingerprint sensor in the home button. So this one you need to swipe to use. Uh, and basically once it's set up, it can be used to log into certain secure apps like PayPal or even unlocking the phone itself. Surprise, um, I kind of wish it would go a little bit further than that. Like maybe I could log into sites in Google Chrome using my fingerprint and, but you know, that kind of stuff is a while off. I did notice this new home button felt a tiny bit less clicky, a little bit less tactile than usual, like it was on the S3 or S4. Maybe it was just my unit, but hopefully it's not quite as mushy feeling when it's on retail shelves. Now, another thing they made a huge deal about is the camera on the back of this guy. So it is a slightly larger 16 megapixel sensor and a new dedicated image signal processor. So this shooter supposedly has the fastest autofocus in any smartphone, clocking in at an average of 0.3 seconds. No idea how I'm supposed to verify this, but playing with the phone, I gotta say, it definitely did feel like a quality high-end phone camera. And this is no surprise coming from Samsung, really. The Galaxy S4 had a great camera. The Galaxy Note 3 had an even better camera. It shot 4K video. And this new S5 is another step up. So 16 megapixels, obviously, the photos are high res. It takes 4K video as well. And it has some awesome new HDR processing and selective focus modes and super fast burst mode that took 30 shots in probably about three and a half seconds and a whole bunch more features. As we know, Samsung likes to throw every feature in the world into their camera. Now I couldn't really pixel peep and judge the actual image quality from the time I spent with it, but I can guarantee you that this is something that we will be taking a much deeper look at in the full review. But taking a look around the back again, you might've noticed some other weird looking things below that camera lens. One of them, yes, is a flash, but the other two make up a heart rate monitor. So of course you have to use freaking S Health to take advantage of it. But yes, you can hold your finger up to the back of this phone for a few seconds and it'll tell you your heart rate. It'll give you a heart rate reading. Not sure how many people are actually going to use this, but that's Samsung for you. It makes for a good ad. It makes for a good demo. It's good to show off to your friends. So of course they built it in. So overall, yeah, messing around with the Galaxy S4, got that feeling that performance is a little bit smoother, not faster, but smoother. Uh, so I'm getting in mind that this really feels like a Galaxy S4 S. 
Dare I say it? Yeah, I said it. It's the Galaxy S4S. Uh, it's got a ton of minor conservative improvements. A little bit weird of a tweak to the design. I'm still not sure how I feel about it. It's obviously inspired by some other manufacturers in some places, but it's just so easy to call this a Galaxy S4 Part 2. Not that that's a bad thing. You know, I guess people were just expecting bigger changes, that's all. TouchWiz changes especially. I mean, you can see here on top of Android 4.4, TouchWiz is looking a little bit flatter, a little bit more toned down. Uh, even though there's still some crazy stuff going on with the settings, but it's definitely still Samsung UX, and you have plenty of Samsung customizations and Samsung apps installed. You even have Samsung's My Magazine one swipe to the left of your home screen, like Google Now on a Nexus or Blinkfeed on the HTC One. So they still want you to use Samsung services and think of this as a Samsung phone. And I'm not complaining, I'm just saying. So that's my first impressions of the Galaxy S5. Of course, there's much more new stuff from Samsung. The new gear watches, uh, a new fitness band that looks pretty hot, actually. You can expect to see this phone advertised right alongside these new wearables because they'll probably want to make you buy them both at the same time. Uh, but I'll have much more in-depth coverage of the phone, the accessories, the wearables, and much more when it all comes out in early April. So definitely hit that subscribe button below if you don't want to miss that. Oh, and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, if you liked it, and share it with your friends. Let them know what's good with the Galaxy S5. This is the video 